Hello friends, and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to share 10 methods for displaying variance with bar charts. If you're new here, my name is Andy Kriebel. I'm the founder of VizWiz.com, the first ever Tableau blog. I created this channel to help you learn Tableau faster. Get ready, you're about to learn 10 methods for displaying variance with bar charts. Each of these 10 examples will help you understand why variance is important. They might add context to visualization, helping you answer that question, compared to what? They might help you make decisions, helping you answer the question, what should I do next? Or they might provide alerts to help you identify areas that need additional focus. In this first example, we're gonna look at the variance between the latest year sales and the prior year sales by subcategory. I've started by building three calculations. The first calculation determines the latest year sales. The second calculation computes the prior year sales. And the third calculation tells us whether the latest year sales is greater than the prior year sales. Let's drag subcategory onto the rows, latest year sales onto the columns, and now we want to add a reference line for the prior year sales for comparison. Let's drag prior year sales to detail, go to our analytics pane, drag a reference line onto cell, change the value to prior year sales, and now our reference line is the prior year sales, and for example, here with machines, we can see the latest year sales is less than the prior year sales, whereas with accessories, latest year sales exceeds prior year sales. Let's go back to the data pane and drag our latest versus prior calculation onto the color shelf. And now we can see the subcategories where the latest year exceeded the prior year, and we're alerting our users to those subcategories where the latest year sales are less than the prior year sales. In our second example, we're gonna create a side-by-side -side bar chart that also shows us the latest year sales versus the prior year sales. We're going to right click and drag order date to the column shelf and pick discrete months. I'm going to then drag sales to the rows and I've created a calculation that determines whether we're in the latest year or the prior year. I'm going to drag that calculation to the filters and choose true. I'm going to then drag order date to the columns to now give me the years within each month. Change my mark type to a bar, and we can see the latest year versus the prior year. Now it might be a bit easier to see if we color code each of the years differently. So I'm gonna drag order date to the color shelf. And now I have a side-by-side -side bar chart that lets me compare the latest year to the prior year. Our next example is very similar to our side-by-side -side bar chart, except we're gonna pile the years on top of each other to create a bar in bar chart. I'm going to right click and drag order date to the columns and choose discrete months. I'm gonna drag my filter for my latest or prior year to the filter shelf and choose true. I'm gonna drag sales to the rows, change my mark type to a bar I'm going to drag my order date field to color. And notice the bars are now st stacked on top of each other. I want to unstack them by going to analysis at the top, go down to stack marks, and turn them off. They're now piled on top of each other. So I need to get one inside the other. I'm going to do that by duplicating the year field onto the size shelf. Now we can see we have 2020 inside of 2021, but I would like them the other way around. So on my color shelf, I'm just gonna reverse the order. I'm gonna drag 2021 above 2020. And now I can see where my 2021 sales exceed my 2020 sales by month. In our next example, we're gonna add an indicator next to the bars to alert our users when the latest year sales is less than the prior year sales. Let's drag subcategory to the rows latest year sales to the columns. Now we have a calculation called latest versus prior. 
If I drag that to the rows, you'll see it just says true or false. I would like to have that as a little indicator instead. In other words, when the latest versus prior is false, I want to show a dot instead. To do that, I'm going to write another calculated field, and let's call it indicator. My formula is going to be if latest versus prior, then I want to return an empty string, so that implies true, else I want to return a dot. End. Let's hit OK, and I'm going to drag that field on top of the rows. I now have a little indicator where my latest year sales is less than my prior year sales. I'm going to right click on one of those dots and choose format. I'm going to go to my header, change my font size to something big, and make it red. And now I can see a little indicator. I can drag my column width over to the left a bit, so now I can see the dot right next to the bars. If I wanted to make it even more intuitive, I can also drag my latest versus prior calculation to the color shelf. And now we have both the indicator dot and the color for the bars. In this next example, we're going to create a deviation chart that shows us the variance between the latest year sales and the prior year sales. Let's drag subcategory onto the rows. What we need to do next is create a calculation that computes the variance between the latest year sales and the prior year sales. Let's create a new calculated field and I'm going to call this one variance to prior year. My formula is going to be the sum of the latest year sales minus the sum of the prior year sales. Hit OK. Drag that field to the columns. Sort in descending order. And then also drag that field to the color. And now we can see the deviation between the current year sales and the prior year sales by subcategory. This next example is very similar to the previous example. However, we're going to be looking at it by month and comparing the year-over-year -year change by month as a column chart. Let's right-click and drag order date to the columns, and we're going to choose discrete months. We have that same calculation we can use before for our variance to prior year. Let's drag that onto the rows, change the mark type to a bar, Let's also drag that field to the color. And there you have it. We can see the year of year variance by month. In this next example, we're going to look at a floating bar chart. A floating bar chart will let us see the spread between the latest year sales and the prior year sales. Let's right click and drag order date to the columns and choose discrete months. We're going to then move our latest year sales to the rows, change our mark type to a Gantt bar drag our variance to prior year calculation onto the size shelf, and then drag our latest versus prior calculation onto color. And now we can see the variance between the latest year sales and the prior year sales, and it's color coded by whether there is an increase or a decrease. We're getting near the end now. Hang with me. Three more to go. In this example, we're going to look at creating a bullet graph. We're going to start by dragging subcategory to the rows, and latest year sales to the columns. Now to create a bullet graph, I'm going to highlight the prior year sales in the data pane, click on show me on the right, and then choose the bullet graph option. Change the view to entire view, and now we can see a bullet graph. So what a bullet graph tells us is the current year sales, the reference line is the prior year sales, in our penultimate example, we're going to be creating something called a spark bar. You may have heard of spark lines before, and spark bars are very similar, except they're bar charts. I'm going to right click and drag order date to the columns. And in this example, let's pick weeks and hit OK. Let's then drag our variance to prior year field to the rows, change the mark type to a bar. And we can see we have that diverging bar chart like we had before. I'm going to drag variance of prior year to color. To make them look like spark bars, I'm going to drag region to the row shelf, change the view from entire view to standard, change my week field to continuous, and now I can grab the right hand side of the view, shrink it all the way over to the left, 
go between my regions and shrink those up as well. Adjust the size of my bars to maybe as thin as they'll go. And now we have spark bars. In our last example, we're gonna look at a population pyramid. In this case, we have the world population from 1950 through 2015. You can find a link to the data source in the description. The data is by year, by gender, but I want my males to go one direction and my females to go the other direction. So I'm gonna to need to write two calculations. Let's create a new calculated field and let's call it male population. And we're gonna say if gender equals male, then population end. Let's duplicate that calculation, edit. Let's call this one female population. I'm gonna say if gender equals female, then I want it to be minus of the population. That way it points the other direction. Hit OK. Let's drag gender off of the view. Male population onto the columns. Female population on top of the axis at the bottom to make it a combined axis chart. And notice measure names move to the rows. Let's take measure names and move it from the rows onto the color shelf. Change the view to fit entire view. And now I'm done. I've got my population pyramid. I hope you enjoyed learning 10 different ways to build bar charts. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you made it all the way to the end, let me know the next series of charts you'd like me to build. And don't forget to subscribe. I don't want you to miss any videos I create.